Hello and welcome to My Southern Exposure. I'm Joseph Manuel Vello here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, saying hello to all of our 2,600 plus viewers. I want to say thank you very much. And then I also want to re-welcome one of the most fabulous co-hosts on the planet, Raji Narayan Singh. Raji? <laughs> Hi, everyone, and flattery will get you everywhere, honey. Um, <laughs> good to be back. I tell you, we have a lot to talk about this week. I mean, with the current events going on, it's going to be a continuation from last week. And then we have a juicy topic. And, I, and honey, that topic can get pretty heated. I'll, um, I had to get myself prepared for today. So I'm looking forward to the to see how the show uh, unfolds. Mickey, hi all. It is good to see all of you. It's good to hear your voices, Raji and Joseph. Uh, I also agree that a lot has happened this past week, and that's perfect for us because that'll give us a ton to talk about. As we always say, there's probably enough to talk about that we could fill many, many, many more hours, but we can only do so much in a talk show. And there's only so much that can be dedicated to talking and discussing. And then the next step is getting out there and doing and taking the actions that are needed to uh, defend uh, marginalized people, especially LGBTQ people, which is what this show is oriented for. So it is fundamental that we incorporate that into our show and uh, talk about the events that are going on because right now the events that are going on are directly related to marginalized communities and the treatment of marginalized communities and everyone, not just marginalized communities, should be concerned about this because people are being abused, people's rights are being taken from them and this movement is to make sure that everyone is safe in their communities. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to get started talking with you guys, but I'm gonna throw that back over to Joseph now because we're running a little late, but. We're, we're good to go, Mick. <laughs> thank yeah. you very much. And thank you, thank you, Raji, also as well. Uh, I'm still getting used to that beautiful red hair, that beautiful red mane that you've got going on, <laughs> Raji. Hey, be careful. It might be purple next week, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I like that, that. That actually, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking, Mick, <laughs> is that it might be nice if you change things up from week to week to keep Ooh. everyone safe or something. Or maybe well, I might get surprises some. in more ways than one, honey. <laughs> <laughs> How often do you dye your hair? You know what? It, it just depends. Sometimes I can do like maybe two, three colors in like a span of like six weeks. But then mm -hmm. sometimes I'll stick with a color for like a couple months or a few months. It's just mm -hmm. my, it depends on my mood. Yeah. Definitely. I'm a moody what's your, what's, your, <laughs> what's your favorite color so far, Raji? What, which, which color has been the most successful or the most rewarding for you out of curiosity? Well, well, you know, it's funny. Um, well, okay, so my th I'm, a, I'm a bright person, so I love bright colors like reds and purple, orange. I wouldn't do my hair orange, but I, I like bright colors. But what Vibrant I've noticed, colors. noticed <laughs> yeah. So what I've noticed in regards to hair is that it just, in whatever color I'm wearing gives me like a different vibe and image. Like if I go brunette, it's like more toned down, but there's like a, a, um, a sexiness, a smooth sexiness to it. Then when I do red, it's like, I'm here, you know, that kind of thing. So it just depends. Um, it, it depends. Blonde, I've done blonde before. Um, but to answer your question, any color, honey, they come running. <laughs> <laughs> I they think be knocking at think the door at two in the morning. I'm like, bitch, you better. I'm sleeping. <laughs> I think I think it might be part. But I think part of the problem, or I should say, part of the blessing, is that you got some really good bait because you have a wonderful personality, 
and a Thank wonderful you. body and uh, a wonderful <laughs> spirit. I okay, think that's, that's okay, you it. really landed on thick now. <laughs> You're like, hey, you have well, you a know what? personality, a wonderful body, a wonderful <laughs> spirit. <laughs> hey, hey, let me let me just say something because you know we gotta make things interesting. So instead of just do diving right into all the stuff, because we got a lot to talk about, sharing things about each of us, just like Mick and just like you and just like me. I got a horror story from this week, Mick. I don't know about what he had happening. And then Raji, I don't know what happened with you, but I had a really horrifying situation that directly ties in with race in America this morning on a bicycle ride with my partner. Uh, and when I share that story with you, I, I, I already spoke with, with Raji about it briefly and said that I just didn't want to talk about it. And I, and I want to see, not see, but I want you both to react to it, how you feel. And I'm certain that both of you also have things that happened as well. But the politics, I should say, the show topics for today are politics. The subtopic is a continuation of race in America. And then I can't stop talking about COVID. I have to give a COVID update because these numbers are not disappearing. People are being blamed because of having peaceful um, demonstrations even though when people were doing push-ups at the state capitals, no one said anything, no militia was pulled out. I should say no militia went to stop them from walking into the state capitals with guns. Uh, but at this point, it's a different situation, which I find really interesting because a lot of conservative people, and I don't want to say what the political alignment is with that type of thinking because there's a lot of conservative Democrats, there's a lot of liberal Republicans. I myself am an independent. Uh, I, I, I don't care who you are or what your political party is or affiliation. I care about what you talk about, what you've done, what you, what, what's good for people just in general. So that's just me. But um, that's pretty much the topics for tonight. And that's definitely a lot of juicy stuff. So I'm going to pass it over to Mick and see if you have anything to share about anything that happened in your week this week in beautiful Los Angeles, California. Thanks for that, Joseph. So this week we saw, for one thing, we saw the curfew getting pushed back further and further until the point where the mayor fully rescinded it. Now, the initial reason for the curfew being put in place while to the best of my knowledge, it was never confirmed by the city that this was the case, but it seemed mostly to demonize protesters and to prevent people from going out and protesting. There were curfews in certain parts of the city as early as 1 p.m. Uh, in Beverly Hills and certain parts of town, uh, downtown just as early as this past week this past Wednesday curfew was at 10 p.m. But I remember when a group of friends, when a friend of mine and I were walking with a group of protesters in downtown, past a group of police officers and National Guard, as we walked by, my friend was just curiously asking them because she wanted to see what they would say. And she goes, what exactly is the curfew for this evening? I'm wondering about getting to my car. What's the curfew? And they kept saying nine, nine, it's at 9 p.m. It's at 9 p.m. Now, at that point, it was probably about 8.15, 8.20 where we were. And most of us were out because to the best of our knowledge, it said we had been up, sent an update to our phone earlier. It wasn't anything that we had to go out and look for on our own. It came to our phones that the new curfew was for 10 p.m. So the cops were giving us the wrong information about when we needed to leave, which makes us think one of two things, either you're uninformed and you don't know how to do your job, which is another reason to not be reassured by law enforcement because they don't know what they're doing by that, or you're lying to us to get us to try and leave, which again, if you're law enforcement, you're enforcing laws. I don't want someone who's in charge of enforcing laws and enforcing quote unquote societal control uh, to be a liar. That's just a very simple thing. So, I mean, 
by the end of this week, they had gotten rid of curfew. And the reason for that is because the ACLU brought a lawsuit against the mayor saying that this was on, that this was against people's rights because on top of it demonizing nonviolent protesters, uh, it also had an adverse effect on service workers who are now being pushed back into work because obviously as all of this is happening, the government is also really concerned with getting us back on track and back in stores and opening businesses, even though there's currently also still a pandemic going on. Uh, so seeing curfew getting pushed back, seeing that now uh, there was a huge push to get the LA budget uh, shifted so that it wasn't unfair that it wasn't blatantly favoring the police. And by blatantly favoring the police, I mean that more than half of the budget over a billion dollars was allocated to the police and is for all intents and purposes still going to be allocated to them. There's still, there are debates every Monday about the budget that the community can call into or email about or email the representatives about so they can keep up with that. Uh, and there have been some concessions, but one of the concessions made by the city was that they would allocate $100 million to $150 million out of the police budget for other programs. Now, that sounds like a lot of money, and that is a lot of money, but that is only $150 million out of a billion dollars. That's like, that barely covers anything that is a, a mere is a pathetic percentage point and not anything that you could actually want uh, included if you're asking for the police to be defunded or abolished. You can't have that. So a change is coming, but it's coming slowly. Some things have been faster than others. Get us getting curfew uh, knocked off and getting that taken away. That was a huge victory. Uh, and there are still protests going on. And really the focus now is keeping that energy up and keeping people aware that, okay, just because it was really, really on the front pages of, of everything for the past week, it's now time for us to go forward and continue doing that work in our homes, in our jobs, in our daily lives, and to continue to show up at these protests and uh, join an organization and join an organizations because these people are doing the heavy lifting to make sure that our uh, rights are intact and that we're safe. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all I had to say on just sort of the weekly check-in as I'm sure we'll dive in a little bit more. But Raji, if you had any, anything to talk about uh, that you saw in the past week. Yeah, definitely. Um, so one of the things that I was just infuriated about was the clip of the police officers, I think it was up in Buffalo, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. where they pushed that 75 year old man down. Mm -hmm. um, I was just appalled. I was appalled about it. I thought it was horrific. Um, and you know, you could just see, to me, they just look like a bunch of bullies. A bunch of bullies with you know, a badge and guns and all this armor. And then you hear that, um, well, the two were, you know, uh, I guess fired and charged, but then, you know, in solidarity, they all, the rest of them resigned. Good, I'm glad. I don't want police officers like that on the force. Good mm -hmm. riddance in solidarity. See, this is the thing. I believe that that blue, uh, that blue coat of honor, it's a lot, lot of bullying that goes on within uh, and amongst the police officers because if you notice, one of those officers wanted to go and stop and help the guy and the other one pulled him back like, no, don't go. You know what I mean? So that really infuriated me. Um, personally, I had a, a situation happen yesterday um, I'm just going to say this, you know, as, as a, a transgender multiracial woman of color, um, I am so happy that the world now, because it's something different about this one. There's been so many other incidents and protests and, you know, 
that sort of thing. But for some reason, I think this one is rippling through the world. And so we're at our intersection now where the world is really truly looking at racism. And, you know, so I, there's something different about that. And I'm so happy. I'm so happy. But, you know, I'll tell you, I was talking to um, a girlfriend of mine. And I, th I don't know if I'd mentioned this last week, but I was, she's a transgender woman of color. And I asked her, you know, how do you feel about everything with the race, you know, um, and George Floyd dying and, her answer to me was, she says, girl, I, I'm sorry. You know, it's a shame and I'm sorry, but she says, I'm numb. She said, you know how we experience injustice from like all the races, even our own community, people of color that want to beat us down for being who we are. And I mean, that like resonated with me because I was like thinking in my life, I've been discriminated by all races, all cultures on different levels. Um, but the most, I would say, the most um, loud and rambunctious discrimination have been from the Black community. And I, I, I and you know, and I'm a trans woman of color, and I'm gonna, I will sit here and say that I've received the most discrimination from the, you know, the community of color. And it's been loud and in your face and, you know, in my face, literally. And I, that's what infuriates me. Cause I'm like, you know, okay, yeah, black lives matter. And, you know, um, my brothers and sisters are out there, black lives matter, black lives matter. You know, the injustice, the discrimination, um, this is wrong. But then turning around and doing, doing it to my trans community, to us. It's like you're, you're protesting against something and you're turning around and doing the same thing that you're protesting about. And it, 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 it pisses me off. And you know, I was coming out, I went to the Publix yesterday. Hey, a shout out to Publix. You get to send us a, a check <laughs> <laughs> for the advertisement? No, um, I went to the Publix yesterday. So I'm coming out and for some reason, I forgot where I parked my car. I never do that. But I think I got it like, I don't know, I got turned around and I was like scanning the parking lot looking for my car. So I happened to like scan over to a car and it was this African-American guy with his girlfriend and they had their baby, I think, or wife. I don't know if they were married. And they were looking at me and hysterically laughing at me. And you could tell, you could tell when someone's like, you know, talking about you and they were like kind of a deer in the headlights because they didn't expect me to like my eyes to go on them in the car. And you could see like they like, like, you know, they're in the middle of looking at me and cracking up laughing. And um, so he's the, the guy stops, like kind of stops and looks at me. And um, I rolled my, I just rolled my eyes and I kept looking for my car. So when they got out, I said, I said, I said it loud. I said, yes, and trans black lives matter too. Transgender mm -hmm. black, and you should have seen them. They were like looking like, yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, if you, are you gonna be selective about this? Like, are you being selective? You're out there marching black lives matter, black lives matter, but oh, only certain people of color. Like, we're not gonna, you know, the trans people, oh, you know, they're disposable, like, fuck them, you know, we can spit on them. You know, so mm. I was so mad, angry about that. I don't know why, you know, I've been through so much and like a lot of things I let roll off my shoulder. I don't, you know, you pick and choose your battles, but for some reason yesterday, that just irked me the wrong way. I see my car, I'm walking to my car and a lady, an African-American lady with her daughter, she had to stop to like, let me go across. And I was turning to like, wave and thank thank her. And when I, I turned, you should have seen the look of disdain on her face, looking at me and like say, murmuring some stuff to her daughter. And her daughter looked like she wanted to like bust out laughing. And she was just looking at me like, she was, she looked at me like I was a piece of crap on the road. And I am like, I looked at her and I said, you have something, because you know what, I tell you, <laughs> I get so angry sometimes. 
<laughs> and their windows were down as they were driving by. And I, I said, you have something to say? Say it to my face. Say it to my face. So I think this is an issue. Now, let me tell you. Oh, if I do a video on this, oh, my God, all the black folks on my social media are going to be in an uproar. It's like, oh, how could you do this? Like, call us out like this. Like, in other words, you know, just stay quiet about it and, like, let's not hurt the movement. Bullshit. I don't have time for the bullshit. If you're standing for something, it needs to be across the board. Don't. Don't be selective with me. And they want to get, and they'll, they'll, you know, you'll hear all this backlash. It'll be thrown at me. Like, why are you calling us out? Like, you know, uh, because it's happening. It's been the story of my freaking life. That's why I'm calling us, calling us out or calling you all out. So anyway, you all can tell that I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, <laughs> passionate right now. But anyway, I'll pass it back to I, No, I'm glad you shared that. And I'm, I, 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 de I definitely agree with you. And Mick, I know you have something to say, and I have a, a, a story to share as well. And to be honest with you, Raji, part of my Southern exposure is for all of us to be able to share whatever you want to say. It doesn't matter. And if they don't like it, guess what? You can look at another show. If you want to hear what people want to tell you, go to another show. Our show is about you, Mick, me, and all the other people who can't even be able to talk. We have to help those people, just like you, just like Mick, just like I do. Every single one of us have to, and that's the reason why we talk about some of these topics, because they're not comfortable, but they're necessary. I mean, yeah. that's, that's, that's the whole point of this. So I'm happy. I'm happy that you used a couple expletives, to be honest with you. It means that you are upset and I feel horrible that those things happen to you. And let me tell you right now, sweetie, because you live close enough to me. You tell me where you are, I will roll up. I will be your backup bitch. I will be your backup bitch and Rick will jump in the car with me and we will do whatever we need to do to take care of whatever needs to be taken care of. So don't, 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 uh-uh, honey. Mm-mm. Don't be, don't, uh-uh. Don't be messing with my Raji. Don't be messing with my Mick. So I'm just saying, but seriously, uh, we had a crazy story also, not a story. We had a crazy situation happen this morning. We were taking our bike ride and it's the same neighborhood, you know, where we take our bike ride every single morning after we drink our healthy drinks and I have my beer, I have my morning beer and a, a shot of vodka and, and some wine and then some coffee. Uh, so it's like totally unhealthy and then healthy just to like even things off. But, uh, and then my ending to that is that I take my bike ride. So we took our bike ride and I swear to God, Mick, if you saw, God bless you. If you bless saw you. what happened and thank God he, 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 I don't know what he did, how he got that sneeze not to get recorded. But if you saw what happened this morning, Raji, you would have been the exact same, you would have felt the exact same way that I feel what happened with you. We come up to the bike, we come up to the stoplight and a Caucasian man in a pickup truck with tools in the back of his truck, I would guess about 50 to 60 ish pulls up. And when I hear a loud truck, if you got a bad muffler, I'm going to look because I don't want to get hit. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm riding. I'm looking, okay, there's a loud muffler. I'm pulling over to make certain that we don't get hit. So, especially on Wilton Drive. He pulls up next to us and he says, how are you guys doing today? I'm like, we're okay with, you know, what's going on. And okay, I'm gonna say this and it's not to horrify or, or share a horrible story, but it's something that needs to be said. He said, and I swear to God, he said, I think all this stuff that's going on is crazy. And all the guy did was take a knee. Take a knee? Seriously. He was talking about the white guy kneeling and killing someone. I don't know any other way to say that. All that happened was he took a knee. Like he was trying to assimilate the idea of taking a knee that we all know about to stand up against the hate 
with African Alives and everything that's unconstitutional. And he actually had the audacity. And it took me like 10 to 15 seconds before it like clicked in my head. It's a white guy that just pulled up next to us. And we're two gay guys on a bicycle and one's white and I'm Puerto Rican and I might look white to him, but just tan. So, and then this guy pulls up and says, yeah, it's all crazy. It's just, it's just horrible. And, and all that guy did was just take a knee. It wasn't that that guy just took a knee. He got murdered. And I can't oh. even believe that that even happened. That, that, that someone would say it that way. I don't know if I thought about it in a negative way, Mick or Raji, but someone saying that, it felt like that person felt like the guy who got in trouble all he did was just take a knee or kneel down. He didn't just kneel down. He killed somebody. No, entirely. That's I how mean, it felt to I, me. Well, no, I, that's, I mean, you should feel that way because, yeah, he took a knee on someone's neck. That's, you did not finish the sentence. That man who said that is living in a world of delusion and hatred and quite frankly sh you should like anytime that anyone says something like that you should at least do your you should do your best to correct them or at least just not let that sort like let him even doubt or you shouldn't he shouldn't he shouldn't be able to make you doubt what he has just said which is basically saying that the murder of someone at the hands of police was merely someone taking a knee which as you pointed out the phrase taking in the is associated with respect and uh, solemnness and something that is very, that is the exact opposite of violence uh, in and of itself. So for him to conflate that statement with what happened is beyond dangerous. It is beyond delusional. It is dishonest and it should get anyone fired up and don't ever question, don't ever, I, I mean, I, I know that you don't feel that way, but um, there's no other way to take that. You were saying, I, I wasn't really sure how to take that. It's like, there is no other way to take that. That's violent and terrible uh, revision, revisionist um, uh, accounts of what happened. A, man's, a man was killed because a police officer kneeled on his neck. Like that is the story. He did not take a knee. Um, I know that. I know that. And I was just caught off guard by it, to be honest with you, Mick. I didn't okay. never, I mean, I didn't, someone I didn't to think, be, I never expected yeah. someone to be nice and then say something like that. I've never ever in my entire life ever seen behavior like that before. Maybe Raji you have, and maybe Mick you have, but I've never, it's I just not never even have seen that. that. Because you said that he was expressing discontent and sadness at what was happening. Did he explain what, did he say specifically what he was sad about, that he was sad that police were be, were brutalizing people or that he was just no. upset that a target got burned down? Because No, he was basically, I think, in what Rick said, and I can't speak for him exactly, but eventually he'll start talking when he wants to, but... Uh, Rick thinks, and so do I, that he was just out to try to start trouble. He was out oh, to yeah. just try to start trouble. And just trying to poke, you know, the bee's nest. And I do, I poke a bee's nest for fun, but not for, for, for things like that. I mean, if I get bored, I might pick on my partner or pick on my mother-in-law or pick on my neighbor or pick on Raji or pick on you. But... Uh, that guy was out with malicious intent. And unfortunately, I could not catch up with that horrible excuse of a human being uh, at the next light. And I think it was a good thing that that didn't happen. But Raji, I tr I, trust me, I know exactly how you feel with, with, with what happened to you in reference to race. And I, I just, it's the part that really breaks my heart is that that's still happening in our own community. And Mick, you probably are aware of it also as well. Well, yeah, Some I people... mean, you know, with me, I think it's in regards to, um, you know, there's something about 
gender and misogyny and all of that that's mixed in with it with me. And, um, and, but the point is that, you know, I was just mad because I'm like, okay, you, you, you say you stand for like, you know, uh, Black Lives Matter, you're fighting against injustice, discrimination, racism, prejudice, but then you're doing it to us, like to us trans people and gay people, I'm sure. You know, I've noticed that transgender male to females and a very effeminate gay men get it the worst. And see, that's where I think it's rooted in misogyny. But in regards to that, that guy that you saw this morning, you know what I think he was doing? I think he was just being sarcastically cruel and racist because you get the, because think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, he was just taking a knee, you know, and, 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 and the whole thing has been around, you know, Colin Kaepernick, I, I always mess up his last name, but, um, and the other players that were taking knees. And so he was using that in a sarcastic way to be racist, to be insensitive, and to be cruel about uh, George Floyd's death. That's, that's how I take it. And he felt comfortable to do it because he saw you two, even though he may have figured that you two were both gay, he saw you two as white men. And so he felt comfortable to do that. I don't know if he would have said that to a black person or a person of color, you know, another person of color. So. Mm -hmm. No, I totally agree with that. Um, and go, uh, I mean, going off of what Raji was saying before, oh, Alan is connecting. Hi, Alan. Yes. Uh, he's, he's, back there. he's back there. He's waiting. He's giving, he's blowing kisses. So, um, he'll, he'll, he'll be on shortly. Please continue with your thought before I get distracted by the fun travel guide guy. No, definitely. <laughs> and um, I just piggybacking off of what Raji had mentioned before, I have seen a lot of people, as Raji was saying before, really try to make the focus on if you say that Black Lives Matter, all Black Lives Matter, and that includes trans and queer people. And that brings a lot of attention to just when a lot of times when these movements have been sparked, I mean, Trayvon Martin was the spark for Black Lives Matter as a whole. Uh, the Ferguson protest was the killing of Mike Brown. Uh, when there was uh, increased unrest and whatnot in Minneapolis in 2016, it was Philando, Cast Philando Castile, I believe is his last name. I'm, I apologize if I'm butchering his name. Um, but it's always been men oftentimes at the focus of this police brutality conversation when uh, trans women of color, uh, just uh, black women are also experience this at an alarmingly high rate and oftentimes don't get the same attention that everyone else does. For example, Breonna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky, who was killed during yes. a, actually, um, this is side noting, but the march that was organized yesterday was organized by a group of black women in her memory because they a lot of people have correctly felt that the overarching emphasis on this on these protests have been on George Floyd and while it's important to remember him as uh, a part of as someone whose death uh, sparked a lot of people's outrage and a lot of people's uh, desire for change um, but there are other members like Breonna Taylor who was killed in a no-knock raid in her own home while her boyfriend was there. And currently the only person who has had any charges brought against them is her boyfriend because he fired back on the cops because they invaded his home and they fired at him and his girlfriend while they were in their own home. What did you expect an armed man to do in a situation like that? So there's people like Brianna Taylor, who we want to focus on, um, Tony McDade, you guys might have heard of him because he was uh, a trans, uh, a female to male trans man who was killed in Tallahassee uh, under suspicious circumstances by the police. And people have been really trying to amplify his death because as, I mean, this just goes wow. hand in hand with what Raji was talking about before that a lot of times the focus on, of, uh, this whole movement has been on 
specifically just black men who have been killed by police. And while they their deaths should most definitely be recognized and uh, mourned for as everyone else, there are other people who are killed by the police uh, in the black community who aren't having their stories as amplified as someone like George Floyd or Trayvon Martin. So it's important to bring those people up. So I'm glad Raji brought that up and um, brought some light to that because that is something that isn't always brought up. And we always think that since uh, everyone is just out marching for quote unquote, uh, more like inclusive ideals and more communal ideals that everyone uh, has like turned their biases off. Um, so again, Raji, I thank you for bringing that up. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, I um, you know, I just want to. Well, no, you know what? This is a lot to get in. I'll, I'll throw it back to Joseph, and then maybe as we talk more, I'll, I'll share another thing with you. All right, cool. That sounds that that sounds good, Raji. Thank you so much for your input, Mick, and thank you, Raji. And trust me, we will be coming right back to you right after Alan as well and just to give you a little bit of information mick and raji over 1004 deaths have been attributed directly to police officers murders not murders but um uh in line of duty i guess is the correct term to use in line of duty in 2019 that's 1004 at the same time 38 deaths have happened in the United States of police officers in 2019. So you can do a little math there. 38 cops died, 1,004 people died in the interaction between the two. Like you can let that sink in. It's gonna take a little bit of a, it's gonna take a little bit of time for you, but that's the, that's the most recent information that I had from 2019. So every time a police officer dies, it's on the news. How about all the other 1,003 people who died at the end of a bullet or choked or kneeled on and whatnot? So I'm gonna to try to uh, change things up a bit and talk about some fun stuff. So the first fun thing that I can talk about is my haircut. Kat provides a custom <laughs> haircut that will suit your individual personality. If you like the way this goopy haircut looks, you will never have to worry about looking like anybody else again. You can stand out from all the rest. Kat Rhea will come to you seven days a week. She's absolutely fabulous and she's right here in the Wilton, Manor, Wilton Manors Middle River Terrace area in Fort Lauderdale. All you got to do is just text message her 954-984-4040 or you can visit her website catriocuts.com. That's K-A-T Rio cuts.com in addition to that if you're looking to go somewhere or get your laundry done or have your shopping done because you don't want to leave your house just like me uh you can go ahead and contact we go llc it's a local option and own and operates in fort lauderdale and also services wilton manors as well as middle river terrace and oakland park as well pre-planned your transportation needs make your life easy if you need a ride to go to or from work you can. If you need to get your grocery shopping done, they will do it for you. They even do laundry services as well. So no touch, no interaction. You leave your dirty laundry outside. Uh, I'm sure we've all had our share of dirty laundry in the group, but uh, you can leave your dirty laundry outside. They'll pick it up, wash it, fold it, dry it, return it to you. Uh, they'll do your, they'll pick, they'll pick up your groceries. Uh, pretty much they'll do whatever is necessary and all drivers if you are going to go to or from work if you are lucky enough or willing or able to they will be wearing face masks and shields and they will also be sanitizing after each and every customer visit wego llc.app that's w-e-e-g-o llc.app to learn more plan your trip 24 hours in advance because it is subject to availability if you are looking for the best in live streaming entertainment besides us, because soon we will be doing it, then we will be the best in entertainment. Then I should suggest until we are live that you should tune into the Rogue Radio Network. Veteran Cleveland broadcaster Chuck Galetti and super producer Big Daddy Marty Allen, one of my best friends, 
for over 25 years, broadcasts live news, sports, and entertainment every Wednesday from noon to 2 p.m. Eastern on Facebook Live, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Manager, iHeartRadio, iHeartMedia, I should say, not iHeartRadio, iHeartMedia, LinkedIn, Spotify, and all major streaming services. Marketing guru, Bill Bender, and salon owner, Carlita Renee, along with me, browned out the Furious Five, giving you the best live streaming entertainment online, separate from us. For all the details, you can go to their live shows and podcasts. Just pull up Rogue Radio Network. Com. The Rogue Radio Network, no rules, no restrictions. And now I have to give a little teaser before we talk to the fabulous Alan Beck. The Fun Travel Guides, the publishers of Travel Guides for LGBTQ Travelers, have been working hard during the COVID-19 lockdown. The new Fun Travel Guides will be coming out in print very soon. In addition, a digital version, website, app, and social media rollout is already partially done, and there's more things that are going to be done soon. Once you are ready to travel, I suggest you pick up the fun travel guides in person or online first. They have local and regional options for anyone in the community looking to travel anywhere and find everything. Visit funtravelguides.com to learn more. And I have to welcome you once again, Ellen Beck. Uh, from Fun Travel Guides and say thank you for joining us. What's going on in Alan Beck's world today? Well, today was a day of a little relaxation and recoup. Uh, I listened to two things that were of major importance of the topic that Mick and Roger were speaking about. And um, it had an impact, continues to have an impact on my life. Uh, the first was listening to the eulogy by Al Sharpton um, of George Floyd's funeral, at George Floyd, Floyd's funeral. And he spoke beautifully, eloquently, to the point, and didn't leave anything to the imagination. And as a humanitarian, I definitely agree that time is now. There is no future time to begin to realize that we are all in this together. We are all equal. It's not black that's less equal, white more equal. We are all, all the humanity in this world equal and for justice to be served righteously, that has to happen too. The other thing that really struck me was to hear uh, Mr. Goodell's uh, of the National Football League's um, heartfelt um, apology on behalf of the NFL and himself for not acting sooner when the bended knee came and not saying at that time, we were wrong, we were wrong and we apologize. Well, he said it in full open face the other day to the world. You can look it up on YouTube. The third thing that had an impact on me today was listening to Barbara Streisand and her uh, video music of lies, stop telling lies. And we all know who it was directed to. God bless her, God bless America, and let's move forward equally from now on. So that, that goodness was, gracious, goodness, uh, uh, that, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if there was a dry on the, in the house, Raji. What do you have to say after hearing what he just said? I'm curious because I, it looks like your eyes are spinning like you just won Plinko back there. <laughs> um, well, no, i very heartfelt. I mean, you talking about these things, I, it like made me really think because 
I did see where it was is it uh, not horrible with sports. It was the NFL that did it or the yeah, the NFL. Right. <laughs> I am so horrible with sports. I'll be watching a football game and I'll say, Yeah, home run. <laughs> but no, that was really big. That was really, really big because do you know how resistant, I mean, these last few years since Colin Kaepernick, um, you know, it was, they were so resistant to it. It was taken as like, oh, a slap in the face, uh, you know, a, a strike against our country and the flag and stuff. And, um, you know, Colin Kaepernick, he hasn't been able to, he hasn't been able to play on any team. No one would take him, you know, so, um, so yeah, that was a big thing this week that happened. And that's something that you said that really struck me. Um, because for someone to come out and admit, you know, to admit it, especially him being a white man, um, you know, a part of an organization that's very powerful, um, I thought that was big. So that's what you, that's one thing you said that really struck me. I have to um, listen to Barbara Streisand's song live. I have to do that. I'll check that out too. Very powerful. Yeah. And I, I have a, a question which came up today. Uh, I was out shopping and they're in a grocery store that I uh, patronize often. And there were four black employees that I took the time to go up to and say, I want you to know that I personally know that black lives matter, that a black life matters. And each of the four of them, two of which I told this story about Robert Goodell, I think his first name is Robert, um, and his profound apology. And they both said, I'm going to check it out. Uh, they were appreciative of my comment. In a conversation with my sister later on, she said to me, well, you know, you said black lives matter. Don't all lives matter? I said, yes. However, not making a distinction and knowing that they're black, the color on their face, uh, their color on their bodies are black, mine's white. And I, that's a distinction that's there. It's not I didn't say it in a prejudicial way. Um, I, I said it yeah. out of love and out of my humanity. And I just wanted to know whether or not that approach is something that you guys find acceptable. Nick, well, over to you, Mick. I can say. Oh, Raji, Raji yeah. definitely had something to say before me. So I'm going to say, Raji, say that. Oh. Or you can address it first. Okay, okay, sorry. I just wanted to say, I think it's absolutely wonderful that you took time out of your day to do that. You made an effort to reach out. So I think that's wonderful. And th I'm thankful to hear that, you know, they were receptive to it. Because, you know, there's this other thing like, yeah, 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 whatever. But, and so I was, I was concerned when you were telling the story that you were going to say that, you know, they didn't receive what you said. So I'm happy that they were open to receiving and hearing what you had to say. They, um, that's each, cool. oh, they, each, said, they each said, I really appreciate what you said or something like that. You made my, one of them said, you made my day and smiled and I could see it. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, so Mick, you want to go ahead? Oh, yeah, for sure. If you're done. I mean, I was just going to agree with what you were saying, Raji, where that it's important to have these conversations and to bring them up with uh, our families and to bring up to when someone says to you, don't all lives matter, to make them think about the fact that uh, the reason that Black Lives Matter came about as a movement is because people were not paying attention to the plights that Black people face, not just in this country, but in this entire uh, capitalist world. And um, one of the metaphors that I've heard 
or not necessarily a metaphor, but a way to kind of explain it to people is that if a house is on fire, that you're not going to say, oh, all houses matter. And you're going to water down every single house. You're just going to focus your healing and your uh, rescue efforts on the house that's on fire and the house that's in distress, the house that's in um, the house that needs help. And this is not always even necessarily the best uh, metaphor I'm realizing how to use because it's not that, um, <laughs> it's it's hard to say because I mean, I mean, I guess it's just because you shouldn't have to make, meta, make up metaphors to say that you care about people. And I think that that's really fundamentally where whiteness plays into all of this. It's that for people like myself, growing up you are not exposed to problems like institution like you're not a, you're not exposed to things like institutionalized racism or just racism in general you're not exposed to police brutality if you grow up in a white middle class neighborhood you're not exposed to the effects of poverty and how that might make you think and how that might make you act um and the black lives matter movement is a way for white people to realize oh i have been ignoring the plights and the demands of people of color for far too long now. And it is an uncomfortable thing to deal with. And it is a hard thing to grapple with the fact that because of the color of my skin, I've been desensitized to a lot of the violence that my fellow citizens of not just the United States, but of the world face just because of their skin color. So it is important to bring these things up and to make when people say, well, don't all lives matter? Um, to stress to them, well, quite frankly, if that is the case, the state and the world at large does not view people that way because people are treated differently because of how they look and their backgrounds. So I yield my I time. Just, yeah, I just wanted to say, um, you know, I just want to throw this in. This week, I had to actually explain why I use the hashtag all Lives Matter because I did a post and I put black, hashtag Black Lives Matter, hashtag Trans Lives Matter, and then I put hashtag All Lives Matter. So you know, I was including everything and I didn't really even think too much about it, but there were some people of color that asked me why I did that. And so, you know, I was talking and I was saying, you know, it's not like I just put hashtag all Lives Matter, I put hashtag Black Lives Matter first, and then I put hashtag Trans Lives Matter, and then I, I, I ended it with All Lives Matter. And I was, and you know, it's so, it gets so convoluted, and it's such a touchy topic. You know, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. I thought by including all of it, I was being inclusive. And, um, and so, I, you know, I explained it like this. I said, you know, there's no, there's no one born with hate in their heart. There's no one born prejudiced, racist, you know, discriminatory. Those are learned behaviors. They're taught behaviors. And I said, you know, if anyone went down to their local hospital right now and they walked into a nursery full of babies, newborn babies, and there were white babies and black babies and Latinx babies and Indian babies and Chinese babies. Could anyone look at any of those babies and say, your life doesn't matter? You know, so I get it. But it's just, you know, even me as a transgender, multiracial woman of color, I got in trouble. You know, I, I, I was just trying to like, you know, cover all the bases. And then, you know, they want to pounce on me. So it gets so convoluted. It's so, it's, it's just so many layers. And, you know, it's almost like you're walking on eggshells. You don't know what to say because no matter how delicate or sensitive you try to be, there's going to be someone there that gets offended, you know, by what you wrote or whatever. So anyway, Joseph. I agree with you, Raji. And to come full circle, Alan, I think what you did was a wonderful thing just like everyone else here does also as well. Uh, but the reason why some people say what they say and do what they do is that there's a lot of percentages that are out there with poverty, I think. So there's only 10.1% of the population that is white, quote unquote, 
that is in poverty and there are 20.8 percent that are in poverty living in the united states of america as well uh, the other one is in between 17.6 percent of hispanic americans uh, are living in poverty and then oddly enough but not shocking 25.4 percent of native americans are living in poverty as well. So when we when we do what you did and what we what Raji does and what Mick does, uh, it's one of those things where you never know that it's going to be well received. But luckily, it was for you, and I think it's great and it's commendable that you said what you said and you got that reaction. But I want to try to focus on something fun, and that's travel related, and something new that you can tell us about fun travel guides. So let's kind of switch things up for a moment and uh, see what we can do to make everyone have something to do besides focus on this other stuff for right now. Because I got a whole bunch of other stuff to go over too. So let's focus on some fun travel. Cool beans. Well, as I let you know before, fun travel guides is has taken the time during COVID-19 and the last 12 to 15 weeks to retool and get ready for the travel season and the travel market and destinations to open and be ready. That's the good news. In reading a, a big article in the Times today, the New York Times, uh, I learned uh, and substantiated something that I partially knew that this summer, uh, Fire Island, which is one of the national seashore beaches and the home of Cherry Grove and uh, the Fire Island Pines, is not going to be the great tourist mecca that it normally is. Uh, the rentals of some of the cottages are well off. The bars are going to be restricted to 50 to 100. Uh, 100 people, depending upon their size, uh, in the bars. And so this is going to limit the number of day trippers and weekend trippers that are going out to enjoy. And talking to my staff in New York City, uh, I find that it's still not, aside from restaurants, beginning to open the occupancy in the hotels is still dismal, uh, some are still closed, and um, a number of the bars have not yet opened. It's a bit different down here in South Florida, where uh, when I went out uh, food shopping today and stopped uh, in two other smaller stores, uh, people were on the streets in Wilton Manors and uh, they were shopping, they were going to the bars that had begun to open and were being respectful in social distancing. Uh, there wasn't, I didn't notice any hand-holding. Uh, people are looking to uh, be respectful. Most people had masks on. So uh, that's what I'm finding and uh, we are getting ready to publish um, two editions, both in South Florida very shortly, one for Fort Lauderdale and Wilton Manors, and the other for Miami and Key West. Next week, I'll be going down to Key West to uh, survey the newly opened areas down there and see how the business picture is. So. That's what's happening in South Florida, in New York. In Canada, things are just opening up. And another new area for us is Latin America, where uh, we have teams out in the field doing surveys, writing material, and getting ready. Um, some of the airports will not be opening for international traffic until September. I know Bogota and the whole country of Colombia will not have flights internationally there until September the 1st. So if you were planning to go to 
Columbia this summer, um, you'll more than likely have to drive. And you can do that from here. It's just a long drive. And you get a chance to cross over through Mexico and through the Panama Canal. And uh, there is a bridge over the Panama Canal and takes you. Oh my God, Alan, you're, you're killing me right now. Seriously, that would be a really long drive. Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Some people have done it. But I love, I, I love, I love the humor with that <laughs> long trip thing down there. I think that would be great. Uh, I don't know too many people can do it, but all right. So what's new? How uh, long is that drive, by the way? How long would that really take? Probably 10 days. Oh, oh 10 days. Okay. Well, the way that he said probably 10 days, it sure seems like he knows how long it takes. <laughs> it took like three seconds. He rolled his eyes to the left <laughs> and he remembered it. He wasn't creating the number when people looked to the right. He looked to the left. So that's I think like, he might have done that. That's like over half of your vacation if you only have two weeks of vacation. <laughs> But let's keep this in let's keep this in mind. Let's let's keep this in mind though, Mick and Raji and also Alan. Some people are still on furlough, they're not working, they don't want to be around other people and it planned accordingly for That's stuff ahead true. of time. So it could be possible that someone might want to just take a month to just get away from everything. The reality is our business our business of fun travel guides is really in a holding pattern for the most part. Um, what we do is suggest destinations. Uh, and by suggesting those destinations, people are interested in going, they'll sign up for uh, a hotel and uh, get there and use our guide or our app or website, our mobile um, website to check out local places to go, fun places to go, and go and have some fun. That's what Fun Travel Guides is all about. And we look forward to serving the traveling public real soon. Well, and we all thank you at Fun Travel Guides, Alan Beck, and I'm sure Mick and Raji and myself will probably be doing some kind of travel that might you know, be part of the reason why you're around. I, I've never been to the Keys, by the way, Alan. I mentioned it to you either. in a private conversation. And oh, get, look at that, Raji. Maybe me and Rick. Done. I know, maybe, maybe the three of us could just go take a little trip down to the Keys and it's only like five hours away or something. My other favorite spot, just to let you know, Alan, and you might want to look into it. I haven't mentioned it to you yet, but Sanibel Island. Uh -huh. uh, okay. It's about... 20 minutes north of, of Naples. We went there uh, and met up with one of my former uh, employers, oddly enough, uh, that I've known for 25 years also as well. I guess everything comes back once it's 25 years later. Uh, so I met up with her and we went to Sanibel Island and Raji, if you've never been there before, absolutely beautiful. And the best thing is cell phones don't work there. The best thing in the world is you cannot get a cell phone service worth a gosh darn. So it's the best place to go if you want to disconnect Sanibel Island. It's absolutely beautiful. A small little island just barely north of Naples, Florida on the west coast and pristine beaches, absolutely drop dead gorgeous quote unquote straight men uh, with, their, with their wives and their little kids. Uh, and He's got some Sanibel, it looks like uh, maybe a shell of some sort. Is that correct? Yeah, and he yes. knows Sanibel. He knows. I went to Sanibel Island when I was mixed age and it was really a treasure. And this came off the beach from Sanibel Island. It's a, it's a beautiful place. It is an absolutely beautiful place. And Mick, to be honest with you, if you've never been there, it's worth coming over to our side. Uh, to the to the to the other side of the country, if you I've go over been. to Ohio and you come, oh no, you're gonna love it. And Raji, you would absolutely adore it as well. 
Uh, there's a beautiful um, aviary, I don't know any other way to say it, that's in a, it's going to sound absolutely ridiculous when I say this, it's, it's a uh, trailer park that uh, people started to house and hold on to and provide sustenance for um, natural habitants of the aviary community. So basically lots of birds, tons of birds. And uh, it's a beautiful little place that you go to. They don't charge you anything. You can feed the birds, you can see the ducks. They have little monkeys and everything. Uh, it's beyond words. If, if it's basically like going to a zoo without having to go to a zoo. And it's in the middle of a trailer park. And I'm sure Alan probably knows the one that I'm talking about. It's been there for a long time. And they have wonderful trails also there as well. All because it's I think it's over sixty percent national preserves. Is that correct? I I wouldn't know that, but I'll okay. take it. Well, then I I'll, I'll get that information. But I just got a little sidetracked uh, with that. I'm sorry. I, I don't know why, but I felt like it was necessary to to share a little Sanibel uh, with the Key West stuff. But hopefully, Raji and and and, and Rick. And I will be going down to uh, Key West sometime soon. Alan, we'll have to figure that part out. Let's all do that together. <laughs> that sounds good. All right. Thank you so much, Alan. And thank well, you so much for being on the show. You all. Mick, do you have Thanks any questions Alan. for him or Raji? You don't have any, either of you have no more questions for him? Uh, no, I, have a, so much, Alan. I have a really quick one. Um, I guess just since I'm in Los Angeles, if you have any uh, recommendations of quick and easy and uh, socially distanced day trips that I that anyone could do in the area or that you think could be feasible in the future, uh, and I guess by like nearby future, just over the summer, if you think that there's somewhere that someone can go. What about Coronado Island? That's not, uh, that, that's by, much farther south, sorry. Um, Los Angeles. How long does it take you to get down to Orange County? Yeah, it gives, I would say between like a, an hour and a half to two hours by car. There, there is a wonderful uh, town called Costa Del Mar and also uh, Laguna Beach, uh, which are two wonderful day trips uh, or stay overnight, uh, beautiful ocean uh, views and uh, s swimming. Uh, there's a number of parks down in that area and just a very enjoyable scenic uh, area to go to. Um, the you're you're riding right along the ocean, and uh, most enjoyable. Corona del Mar, or Laguna Beach. All right, good to know. Good to keep in mind. Thanks, Alan. You're welcome. Roger, anything? I think she's, I, I don't think she has any questions. She looks like oh, she's oh, no, good. No, 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 I'm good. I'm good. I, I, I know I, you're I good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, um, you know, what you said in the beginning, you know, struck with, stuck with me. And I'm going to look into that song by Barbara Streisand. I want to listen to that. And Mr. Goodell's first name, by the way, is Roger. Is Roger? Roger. Roger Goodell. Good night, everyone. Well, you have a good week. Good night, Alan. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Alan. We'll talk to you next week, and I'm sure you're going to have some more tales to tell us. That's for sure. <laughs> I certainly will. <laughs> All right, Mick and Raji and Alan, uh, what I want to do now is uh, come back to what we stopped talking about earlier. And I have so much that I want to bring up, Raji, but I don't know if you remember 
what you were talking about before Alan um, came on. Uh, it was, I believe, in reference to um, race in America still. We were still continuing on with that topic and about how in, in, in the trans community that there's race and what had happened with you. So I just wrote down a couple little notes. That's all that I wrote. So, uh, but there was something specifically that you had in mind and you pushed it off to the side. So you might remember it later if I, if I give you a moment. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. I think that's what's, what's going to happen. happen. I hate when it happens. I'm getting all but, old. <laughs> it's, it's okay. And you know, that's Rick. Don't you think that's I'll like, that. <laughs> that's the, I think that's the best thing about having a, a live show that's recorded. We don't edit it. If something, someone says something that's not so good, guess what? It, it, it goes. We're good to go. So I don't know mm -hmm. if you want to say anything uh, at the moment, Mick, but I can bring up politics because that's been burning in my ears all day long. And I have a lot of information. Mick and I started talking about it earlier. And we only got 20 minutes left to the show and there's a lot more information to go over. And one of these things that we talk about, probably Raji, will probably spark your memory if it was race related or if it was trans related or if it was politics related. I wanted to bring up a couple of different things that um, with politics in the United States, and this is just the United States, there's politics all around the world. I think personally that part of our problem, not mine or yours or Raji's, uh, Mick, uh, none of us have this issue. But for the most part, in the United States, there is a Republican and a Democrat party. And that's it. It's really not acknowledged independent. If you register as an independent person like myself, I am a registered independent. I don't switch and flip and flop back and forth. I don't feel that it's appropriate because I don't really care about what, where the, what the person's political view is. I care about the person myself. But in the United States, it's Republican and Democrat. So, but on top of that, there are close to, good gosh, uh, 35 or 40 other parties that are on a sheet, two sheets. It's not just Republican, it's not just Democrat. And I think part of the reason why we have so much division in the United States from my perspective is people think of Republican as American. In, in my head, when I hear Republican, I think American. And when I think of Democratic, I think of democracy. So that's, that's I think maybe possibly other people might have that same uh, thinking, which it's, it's not, you don't have to have one without the other. But I don't like the idea of us having a president personally I don't like the idea of politics the way that it's currently set up. And I have a couple of really creative ideas that I've shared with other people and I think I'm absolutely bat crazy when I say it. I don't think that the name of the person running for office should be disclosed. I don't think their voice should be hear, heard, I should say. I don't think there should be any video of the person as well. I think that the person who is running for any office should have a number just like you, Mick, and you, Raji, and I have. We have a number. If we start to separate the sex, the race, the gender identity, whatever it is that goes with that person who is supposedly supposed to serve the public, I think that that would be the best way for us to change things in a dramatic fashion. As long as you have a name, you have that it's about that person. They're not supposed, it's not supposed to be about the person's name. It's not supposed to be about their political party. It's not supposed to be out where their, where the money came from. It's not supposed to be out any, about any of those things. I think personally, I think it should just be that that person who's running for office, their words, you get to see what they did, what they accomplished, and there's no way to figure out their sex or their orientation or what their actual political affiliation is to go backwards. I don't think that there's gonna be any progress with the political system 
until we start to look at things completely different because what's working now is not working clearly. That's just my perspective. It's, I came up with the, uh, uh, an idea for a book called The Right In Candidate is the name of my idea. It's the right person. It could be a 20 year old. It could be a 90 year old. It doesn't make a difference what their sex is or what their race is. But as long as we, if it's this person's name or that person's name or that person's name or this party or that party, there's too many things that are muddying up the water. So that's just my perspective. So I just wanted to put that out there. I know it sounds a little kooky. And then the other thing that I'm gonna say is no wonder why no one likes Nancy Pelosi. She's the only Democrat on this list of over 18 people to replace our current orange monster is what I refer to him as, but that's the only Democrat. Everyone else is a Republican. So uh, I understand why everyone's trying to track her down and, 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 and demonize her, but she's been doing a really good job to protect a lot of LGBTQ people rights and everyone else has been taking them away one by one. So that's pretty much my whole thing with politics. I'll turn it over to either of you, whoever wants to jump in first. Uh, well, I think that first and foremost, as Joseph and I had talked about before, the idea of the two party system makes the very idea of politics in the United States very, very difficult to be a collaborative sort of thing because it pits one group against another, Republican against Democrat, right against left, which there's no really easy way to allow people to really have any sort of disagreements or address things on a spectrum because it is either you're fiscally conservative or fiscally liberal. There's no way for you to quote unquote meet in the middle. But I think that a lot of things go a lot further than that in the sense that the Republican Party, I mean, for one thing, I don't really have a lot of love for the Democrats either, but the Republican Party from a very upfront standpoint, like they're the party that is typically uh, more inclined to support programs and institutions like ICE. Uh, uh, they're more likely to be against LGBTQ uh, rights and to be more in favor of laws that would discriminate against LGBTQ people. Uh, they're also more likely to be conservative when it comes to a woman's right to her body or a trans or a trans man's right to their body because trans men can get pregnant as well. It's not just women who can be pregnant. Um, and uh, I mean, going off of that, it's like, obviously, they are more openly the, I guess you would say bad guys in the political system, because these people su openly support horrible things. Uh, but when you look at people like who the Democrats support, like Joe Biden, Joe Biden is our nominee for the, Dem for the Democratic Party right now. And he has done a number of things that are also very, very questionable, including uh, his uh support and help with creating the 1994 crime bill and crackdown bill that has led to a lot of the uh police brutality and excessive police force that we forces that we see today and this is a candidate that was not at the front was not really the front runner for i would say a good portion of the primaries until people realized that bernie sanders was a was the most popular of the Democratic candidates and the Democratic Party, or I should say the Democratic establishment, threw all of their weight and consolidated all of their weight behind Joe Biden because they were afraid of seeing Bernie Sanders go through because they think that he's quote unquote too radical. I think the main problem with American politics is that uh, Dem even Demo like Democrats aren't far left enough for what I think a majority of people want. People want universal health care. People overwhelmingly, I would say, as we've seen over the past few weeks, would like to see a at least massive police reform. Uh, I would say that probably most people are on the are of the view that LGBTQ people deserve certain 
uh, or deserve like all equal protection under the law and deserve to be recognized and whatnot. Um, and I think to a certain extent, the idea of politics in and of itself is it inhibits any sort, it inhibits a lot of the change that we can make in society because it, it boils everything down to debate and theory and stuff. And well, not even necessarily theory, I should take that back, but it's all debate and hypotheticals. And it doesn't really address a lot of the problems that people are actually facing. Like, I don't really care if you voted Democrat or Republican, like what's your opinion on the homeless crisis in America? Because quite frankly, Republicans and Democrats have done very little to address either of those things. A lot of people who are taking action in trying to reduce homelessness are independent uh, parties that are just independent of politics altogether. They're community-led organizations that are doing the work that our politicians say that they're going to do. Um, so I guess circling all back to that, my, I guess, radical idea in comparison to the one that Joseph had proposed about just kind of a blind write-in candidate, I think that Americans just need to start, stop thinking about politics as a be all end all to everything. Like just thinking that just voting is going to give us the results that we want or that simply voting blue is going to save us from this nightmare because even before Donald Trump was in office, we were seeing issues like police brutality. There was, uh, there was still debate about healthcare and what it exactly means for everyone to have universal healthcare and why that's become such a popular talking point in the past few years, because that's what people want. It's not going away uh, despite a lot of people saying that it is an unfeasible thing or that it's not uh, a morally correct thing because there are people who would argue that you need to earn your health care, which that's an entirely different topic. But um, I'm going on very a very, very long tangent about politics. And I think Raji should have uh, her own say in this as well. So I'm going to let you talk, Raji, if you had any comments about politics for this week. <clears throat> Okay, um, well, you know, it's funny um, what Joseph said about, you know, the whole thing about a write-in blind candidate in the sense of not um, basically wanting to, um, and not, not necessarily knowing how the person looks and their affiliation, but like listening to what they have to say. It's interesting. There's a show on Netflix called, um, I think it's called Blind Love or Love is Blind. Love is Blind. And it's, you know, it's something like that where these couples hook up, but they don't get to see how they look. Um, they only get to choose the person they want to hook up with based on vibe, energy, and intellect, you know. So that was funny when you said that, because I was thinking about that um, reality show experiment that they did on uh, Netflix. Uh, now, Mick, I have to say, like, you are just, it's just really great to be a co-host with you because you are just so well-rounded from like the last few weeks of doing shows with you. You know, the way you speak and you're, um, you're just so up on things and you're so conscientious about like being correct when it comes to like race and I just really appreciate that. And I just want to say it's like an honor to be a co-host with you. So thank you so much. Um, because I just feel like you're going to do some really big things. Um, I can just see it. Like you're going to do some really big things. And uh, in regards to like justice and humanity and other things too. But like, you know, it's just, I just had to say that I was feeling that. So, you know, politics, are, it, to me now, when I, when I think about politics, the first word that comes to my mind is bullshit. Yeah, really, literally. Yeah, I mean that's what I that that's literally the first word that comes to my mind. Bullshit. Whether it's the Democrats or the Republicans or the Independents, it's kind of like this whole thing of like, what is really happening? Like, what really goes on? Like, even with the last election, yeah, 
I mean, even with the last election, um, you know, it was like, oh my God, you know, the, the thing about the Russians stepping in and Hillary supposedly had the popular vote, but then it was just, I, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, what? No, really, like, do we really yeah. know what's happening in our government? And there's so much, I would say, so much, um, I'm trying to think of the right word, um, besides bullshit, right? No, um, there's, you know, it's just like so much corruption, corruption that's going on, I believe, behind the scenes that none of us really see, like the full picture. Um, What's interesting to me, you know, it's, I, I'm a Democrat, okay? I used to be a Republican, uh, sorry, I used to be a, a um, what you are, Joseph. Uh, um, independent, an independent. Independent. Yeah. You used to be an independent, to be an ind right. Yeah, I used to be an independent, but I became a Democrat because, you know, you can't vote when you're independent, you can't vote on certain elections. So I was like, no, I want a voice in all of it. So I became a Democrat. So now, you know, you hear people say, well, you know, the Dem like I was having a conversation with a white transgender woman who's a friend of mine. And, you know, she's a Trump supporter. And she's a Republican. And I like scratch my head when I talk to trans people that are like Trump supporters and Republicans because I just don't see it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't see the Republican Party being supportive of us. I don't see that. And, but her thing was, oh, you know, the Democratic Party is really working against people of color to keep them, like, suppressed. This is her take on it. And, that you know, the Republican Party was the one that ended slavery. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, that was in 1867. What, I mean, what has the Republican Party done for me lately? I mean, really, that's like over a hundred fucking years ago. Like, and I'm sorry, excuse my language. I just get really passionate, you know, when I think about these things. And I'm like, what have they done for us, for the LGBTQ community? And whenever you look at a rally, you see like specks of people of color. It's almost like they planted them there. Like, you know, it's all these like white folks. And then you'll see one, one black person here, maybe a Spanish person there, you know, Asia. But it's like, the, like, like when you look at a democratic convention, it's a melting pot of people. And call me naive, but I go based on that. Like what I'm seeing and, and what I'm feeling. And for me, I feel like the democratic party is has more of my back you know they would they would care more about me than the republican party now that's not now that i'm making like a general statement there's exceptions to that i'm sure there's republicans that you know do uh consider my rights as a an american citizen but this is what i mean by i go on what i see when I went to Tallahassee in January to the Capitol to meet with the lawmakers, no Republican agreed to meet with us, okay? No Republican agreed to hear what we had to say. Now, to me, that's a clear message. All right, that's a clear message. I was, um, you know, the, the thing about the whole... Um, but well, this person that I was talking to, and actually surprisingly, I have a few trans friends that are Republican and that support Trump. And one of them happens to be biracial. And I was like scratching my head like, <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, you know, their thing is, well, you have to look at things from a broad perspective. I look at things from a broad perspective. I really do. You know, they were like, well, you know, the media is always twisting and like changing around and like what he says. And I'm like, well, listen, I've listened to what he said and uh, I don't have a problem with my hearing. <laughs> so, you know, so, you know, the stuff is coming out of his mouth. Now, um, granted, I do agree 
that the presidency is a thankless position. Because no matter what you do, there's going to be some group of people in the country that are unhappy about it. And so anyway, um, I was like, Obama came up, you know, Obama, President Obama, and the, my friend was saying, well, you know, that he ended the space program. And, and I was like, I have to do my research on that. Um, and I was like, well, can he just end it or was it voted through Congress and the Senate? And she couldn't answer me. And then she says, well, that was something that she was really disappointed about. I said, but did you, did you see what he did for LGBTQ people, you know, for our community? And, you know, she was like, well, you know, and he, some people of color just voted for him because he's black. Let me tell you something. I voted for Obama because he was well-spoken, articulate, educated. He came off as someone that took everyone into consideration, like every all the citizens of the United States into consideration. And I didn't vote for Jesse Jackson when he ran. No, I did not. I didn't vote for, what was the other one? I think Al Sharpton ran too once. I didn't vote for him, but I felt Barack Obama was the candidate. And so I voted for him. So I said to her, I said, you know, Bonnie, it's interesting. Like all the presidencies of the of the um, United States, all the presidents have been white except one, one, one president of color. And it seemed like a lot of white people in the country lost their mind. Like, I mean, damn, can we have one? Like you lose your, yeah, every other president, all of our, one president of color, and then, and then, you know, she was talking about like, oh well, you know, Trump has done so much for this country, and you know, she said to me, she says, if you're looking for an articulate person, no, you're not going to find that with him. If you're looking, you know, she said, yeah, he's arrogant. Okay, he's arrogant. Yeah, maybe he blurts out some things from time to time, but he's getting stuff done. And then I was saying to her, I said, well, okay, you know, there's some things, I mean, he's do obviously working as our president doing some things, but I said, um, so then she brought up the fact that, do you realize he's not taking a paycheck? Um, and I said, okay. I said, but he's getting paid. I said, because he is an egotistical person. So this is feeding his ego to be able to say, I am president of the United States of America, okay? So believe me, even though he's not taking a paycheck, he is definitely getting his reward from this, okay? Because it's, it's, it's feeding his ego to be able to have the power that he does. And so anyway, I was saying to her, I said, you know, every president has had their, their you know, issues and no one's perfect, but I said, you know, when Obama was president, what did Trump try to do? He tried, he had a campaign against him to say that he was not an American citizen. You know, like, I mean, come on. And I also said, and I'm going to stop now because, you know, this is such a deep topic. You know, I could go on and on about it. But I also said, um, oh, God, oh, my God, my age in mid-sentence is going. Hold on, hold on. Oh, I use the example of like how, remember when Trump said, um, when Trump had said that, uh, you know, he grabs women's, women's uh, vaginas. He didn't say it like that, but, you know, to, to Billy Bush. And I said, he went on to be president and Billy Bush couldn't get a job for a few years. I mean, and he wasn't the one that said it. You know, so what is that, like, what is that all about? And, I, oh, this is another thing I said, and then I'm going to hand it over to Joseph. Um, I said that, you know, if Obama went into the presidency saying half of what Trump says, there would have been people in this country that would, would, would have wanted to lynch him, okay? I said, you know, it's like, oh, certain people get a pass. You know, Trump is a white conservative, privileged, rich American man. 
So he can say certain things and get away with it that someone like Obama, President Obama wouldn't have been able to do. And that's the double standard. So anyway. Well, um, you brought up a lot of really good stuff and I'm printing off something uh, I, I, I didn't anticipate for this conversation to go down this direction, but I do want to let everyone know what the word trumpery means. The word trumpery with Ooh. the current fake leader's name, trumpery is a noun. The definition, Miriam Webster's Webster definition is worthless, nonsense, trivial or useless, tawdry, finery. Pretty much that's about what all I got to say about the word Trump and Trumpery. Uh, and also to uh, back up what you were just mentioning, people have been picking on Obama for the space race and everything else. I have some information right here. So I wanted to say that he actually, in 2010, major space policy at Kennedy Space Center, he committed to increasing the NASA funding by $6 billion over five years and com completing the design of a new heavy lift launch vehicle by 2015 to begin construction after that. He also predicted a U.S. screwed orbitable Mars mission. It sounds horrible the way that I just said it, but it's U.S. crewed. I said screwed, but crewed. Orbital Mars mission by uh, mid-2030. Preceded by the asteroid redirect mission by 2025. In the response to concerns over job losses, Obama promised a $40 million effort to help Space Coast workers affected by the cancellation of the Space Shuttle Program and Constellation Program. So no one can say anything negative about Obama with the whole space thing at all. So all of that is just tomfoolery and trumpery as far as I'm concerned. So uh, I don't know what either of you have to say to follow that. It looks like Mick is probably pulling up the same information uh, that I pulled up because he's looking off to the side at his computer possibly. So what I do want to talk about for just a couple seconds before we say goodbye to everyone at home, I want to thank everybody with our over 2,645 views. Hopefully they will continue to watch us and watch much more. Like and subscribe if you want to get a hold of Raji. It's Raji at mysouthernexposure.site. That's R-A-J-E-E at mysouthernexposure.site. And it's also Mick, M like Mary, I-C-K, at mysouthernexposure.site. And for me, Joseph at mysouthernexposure.site as well. Make sure to go to our website, mysouthernexposure.site. You can go ahead and click and scroll down. You can go and watch the show on Facebook. You can also watch it on YouTube. You can check our Twitter and also our Snapchat feeds or Instagram, I should say. So any way that you want to get a hold of us, you can. You have email, you have phone number, you can go to the website, you can look at our social media. Uh, basically, we are available for you pretty much 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we would love to get some input from you, the watchers at home, to let us know what is important to you, because we want to make certain to keep you watching, have you watch the entire show, tell your friends about it, like, subscribe, and also pass the word along to others, because we are talking about topics that a lot of other people don't feel like they want to, or maybe they just don't have time for it and we definitely do we take time about our out of our day once a week to sit together and i'm actually already six minutes past our scheduled time so i have to apologize but pretty much that's about it for tonight's show if you have anything to say mick or raji please uh say something to everyone watching at home well i just wanted to um say you know, uh, this, especially this last election, I realized how no matter who you are and the work that you do in your life or career, um, anyone running for political office can really be subject to smear campaigns. You know, these smear campaigns are serious now with the social media that we have. Stuff goes out on the internet and it can be all kind of crazy things in your 
like for me, I'm scratching my head saying, really, this is what this person did. So I just want to close by saying, don't believe everything that you see on social media, like really do your research and look at things like how I was saying that I'm going based on what I see, like what happened to me personally up in Tallahassee. These are the things that I kind of use to guide myself when I'm making a decision for uh, voting for a particular um, political per, um, per, uh, candidate. So, you know, these smear campaigns can be serious and people start to believe the shit, like stupid stuff that, you know, you know, that will, they'll actually believe. Like there was one called Pizzagate and I was like, oh my God, they actually had people going to this pizza parlor in DC wanting to blow it up and, and uh, create havoc because of the Pizzagate. You all can look that up. But I'm just saying, you know, don't look, look beyond the surface. Like just don't, just don't go surface and right away run with it because looks are deceiving. Yeah, Nick? I, I definitely, wow, Raji, this is perfect because I'm just going to continue off of what you had said. So I'm glad that you said that about social media being a very surface level sort of thing when it comes to a lot of this. It, I should first point out that social media has done a great deal to make people aware of this issue that's going on that a lot of people, quite frankly, are still just discovering, like not learning more about, but literally learning about this right now, um, which is surprising to hear, but a lot of people are becoming aware of this issue through social media. And that's a really great thing. The important thing going on from here now is, as you said before, being aware kind of where, uh, what you're researching and what you're seeing and what petitions are coming up and what organizations you're being asked to donate to and stories that you're hearing because there is a lot of outrageous stuff that is happening out here right now that uh police are getting away with that sounds unreal but is actually and factually documented and so the important thing is to have news judgment and go in and discern uh which of these stories that especially if you're seeing them on social media but even from the local news uh whether or not that's being covered correctly that there is video footage that supports the claims that are being made there that there are other people if you found the article through twitter or instagram that maybe there are people commenting on it saying like i was there i can verify or i like this is video from my time there i can confirm that the police did push this 76 year old man to the ground because they initially said that he tripped and a lot of people reported what the what the police officers had said in their initial statement that he had tripped when it is very obvious that he was pushed down and afterwards the cops did not help him up. There's a whole video of that happening and they still tried to argue that something else happened. So it's important to have good news judgment and it's also important to, if you're getting a lot of your information from social media right now, that's fantastic. Now find out where that information is coming from and do your own research, read up on uh, people like Angela Davis or um, people like James Baldwin who have been talking about this type of stuff for years now and who have come up with uh, proper theories and groundwork for the type of society that we're now currently advocating for one without a one for one without a police force so in order for one to argue for that type of thing uh, you have to educate yourself. And I think there's a huge pressure on social media to really have everything figured out and no, uh, saying the right thing at all times and being constantly just invested. And you should be constantly invested in this fight because it is ongoing, but it's also important to do your research and be thoughtful about the things that you're putting out there because uh, this is a fight that we're all on the same side, really. and uh you want to make sure that you're contributing everything that you can in a positive and thoughtful way so go just beyond uh twitter go to your local library or um go to someone's page who you consider to be an organizer or thinker that you admire and read up on what they're reading on or what they recommend or organizations that they suggest that you join because that's 
the next step in all of this. Social media is the initial spark of all of this, but going forward now, it's going to be more than just social media. Keep it in as part of the playbook because it's helpful and it's how people are initiated and brought into a lot of different things. Um, but then going from there and doing the extra legwork of educating yourself is something that everyone needs to focus on now. Thank you so much for that, Mick. Uh, and uh, I just want to toss it back over to Raji and Mick to say any special thank yous to anybody out there uh, who might be watching, friends or family or anyone that they know that needs a little hello and a little uplift. Well, I just, you know, I want to thank all of the people that have been uh, supportive of me, uh, you know, my followers around the world that have really, you know, embraced my essence and uh you know been able to see my love and light and been there and and supported me because those are the people that inspire me to keep going you know and so i just want to put that out there to my um wonderful followers or slash i like to call them supporters around the world that have truly been in my corner so thank you and love peace good health prosperity and many wonderful blessings. Mick? Uh, so for me, um, I would like to shout out this organization that is called the Black Trans Travel Fund. Uh, and I'm just going to read their words from their website just so that um, I, I get their message and their uh, work out there as correctly as possible, but the Black Trans Travel Fund is a mutual aid project developed in order to help provide Black transgender women with the financial resources needed to be able to self-determine safer alternatives to travel, where women feel less likely to experience verbal harassment or physical harm. This project was created out of direct response to the relentless and unacceptable violence Black transgender women across the country have been experiencing. We are currently providing our services to Black trans women in New York and New Jersey, and we'll be working to expand our efforts to other states soon. Um, I made a donation to them earlier last week, and this once again ties into a topic that Raji had initially uh, brought into conversation that I think we've all spoken on as well, that uh, as we're talking about Black Lives Matter, that means that the lives of Black trans women and Black trans men also matter. Uh, and organizations like this are a great way to um, not only help that community, but if you want to learn more about their community, about this um, type of work, you can follow organizations like this uh, and learn more about some of the struggles that people who maybe aren't like you uh, happen to face on a daily basis. So once again, that's the Black Trans Travel Fund. It's spelled exactly the way um, that it said. You can Google it and their website comes up. Uh, their cash app is at uh, dollar sign Black Trans Travel Fund. Their Venmo is also at Black Trans Travel Fund if you are looking to contribute that way as well. And if you're looking to use PayPal, if you don't have Venmo or cash app, their PayPal is at Black Trans Travel Fund at gmail.com. But as I said before, don't take my word for it. Google them, check them out. They're a great organization. Oh my goodness, that's Mick, why thank I you so love, much. That's why I love Mickey. <laughs> thank <gasps> you for doing don't, that. Don't, don't make me jealous, Raj. Don't make me jealous, Raji. I'll have to come down there and, and <laughs> oh, do something. never, never. You're the head kahuna in charge, never. Oh, stop it, no, but. <laughs> Don't be cheating on me with that. Don't be cheating on me with Mickey, because I'll get offended. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all joking aside, this thank you so much. Huh? Go ahead. Go ahead, Rashi. No, I was just, I was just gonna say, this is a very interesting sandwich, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord! I'm in the middle. Oh my goodness gracious! I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't get it until you just said it that way. But that's hysterical. And it, oh my God, you made me snort. Okay, all right. So, anyways, for everyone watching at home, thank you so much from my Southern Exposure. We will be back here next week at seven p.m. As long as everyone is ready, 
uh, on time, then we'll all be here because we all want to look fabulous for you. And don't forget to like, subscribe, forward, um, and pretty much that's about it. Share some of the information that we're giving to you. Learn, listen, watch, repeat. That's what's on the ad. And that's a really good thing to do. So we all need to be uh, aware of each other and try to do whatever we can to help each other. So thank you very much. And um, I'm so grateful for all of you watching tonight and whoever's gonna watch the show for the rest of the week. Thank you. Bye. Thanks all. Have a good week. Thanks. Have a great week.